Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the north, Tim from the south, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil Gore. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Civil Gore podcast. I'm your host, Tim. And this is Brian. And we may look a little less festive for this dismemberment video <laughs> because we're all tired because we're recording this early, like but like right before the uh, Christmas. So we're, you know, a couple days before. So we're like kind of wiped out from just prepping for the holiday and running all over the place. Crazy work schedules. So uh, yeah. we apologize a little bit uh, for the... Uh, we're just looking a little bit like yeah, mean, Tim's, we're not, Tim's being stabbed actually at the moment. If you uh, see. We're uh, yeah, we're not we're not in our fresh new year, baby new year, yeah. energized mode. We're still knee deep pre holiday as you're as you know, as you're watching this, of course, those have already passed. So happy new year in advance. Yes, uh, and well, well welcome to the to the year seven of civil war that's fine I, I mean i guess we always have it that way right it always ends up with the dismemberment basically leading off the seasons now right because um, yeah depending depending on where that first tuesday falls yeah. right yeah yeah so. uh, yeah and with mean, the way we've been doing it taking like a three-week break yeah it pretty much does kick off the uh the new year so yeah as you're watching this we are this is kind of the unofficial kickoff of season seven but we'll obviously have our official yeah. kickoff of season seven with episode 250 which is gonna be a big milestone and uh yeah. that one should be a lot of fun we got we got some fun plans in in the works for that one i think so yeah yeah all right well let's kick things off these are your horror blu-ray releases for january 2023 and the first week we're going well, to well take that last s off for our uh single <laughs> Yes, <laughs> first release. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're going to start off the uh, the new year with one release in uh, January third, and uh, this is obviously our pick of the week because it's the only thing we could yeah. pick this week. It's from Lionsgate, and it's Pray for the Devil 4K. This one came out in 2022. A nun prepares to perform an exorcism and comes face to face with a demonic force with mysterious ties to her past. Uh, this one. Like I said, I'm always up for a good possession movie or a bad one. So yeah. this looks like uh, maybe somewhere in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely there's a lot of creepy imagery, but it could be one of those ones where they just do a really good job on the trailer, like putting every creepy image all together. I, whether or not it holds up as a full movie, we is yet to be seen. But I, I want to say I heard some good things about this, but um, I t I kind of feel like I did, too. So uh, it does have some good extras on this one, though, for a yeah. Lionsgate release. It's got an audio commentary with director Daniel Stamm and actress Jacqueline Byers. Possessed, creating Pray for the Devil, a lullaby of terror, mm -hmm. the devil's tricks, visual effects, Pray for the Devil cast read, the original first draft screenplay, and Speak No Evil, a real exorcist and church psychologist discuss possession. So, yeah, you're right. That does say yeah. Lionsgate, and that Lionsgate really isn't big on features all the time. So, that's yeah, good. yeah, they must be really trying to push this one. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in watching this one. I think it I think it could be pretty cool. I mean, it, it looks very Exorcist knockoff ish. Yeah, but it still looks actually pretty good. So, uh, so that, yeah, that's it for January third. So let's move right on to January tenth, which is when things start to pick up just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, first one out of the gate is again from Lionsgate: Fear the Walking Dead season seven. This is a series that I just you know I watched the first two or three seasons and i just kind of fell out of the whole walking dead bandwagon i just couldn't take it anymore and i just i never followed back up i had heard this series got better mm. much better as it went along but i just didn't have the patience maybe one day i'll go back and revisit it i don't know uh, i can't believe there's seven seasons i feel like this is the one that just started I but i guess that was a different one there was one that started like two years ago right yeah th yeah that's yeah that's a different one oh, okay. uh, which i have not watched any of those yet uh, Fear the Walking Dead is, of course, what did the world look like as it was transforming into the horrifying apocalypse depicted in The Walking Dead? The spinoff set in Los Angeles following new characters as they face the beginning of the end of the world will answer that question. Uh, this one has a episode 701 audio commentary with executive producers and co-showrunners Andrew Chambliss and Ian Goldberg. Episode 703 audio commentary with actor Jenna Elfman and writers Nick Bern Bernardone and Jacob Pinion. Oh, Jenna episode... Elfman's in this? This series? I, uh, I, I don't remember her in the seasons I watched, so maybe she came in later. Yeah, interesting. Um, episode I just know her so much from comedy, so it's weird to see her in like... Oh, yeah, yeah. This. 
Um, episode 716, audio commentary with executive producers and co-showners, Andrew Chambliss and Ian Goldberg. So there you go. Uh, next one we got here is... Uh, oh, no, that's our pick of the week. Gotta skip that. Sorry. Uh, next one is uh, Shout Factory. He's coming with Ouija, or Ouija, depending on how you want to say it. I've heard it said both ways. Someone told me it is pronounced Ouija. Is the it pronounced. is because it's from the German word, yeah. So. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, anyway, so that's uh, for uh, it's the 4K version uh, from 2014. I, you know, actually, I like Becky Galantine. She just calls them talking boards. That's the way because she's right, that's like, the way you go. Yeah. Ouija yeah. is a brand name, so right, she, yeah. She, she so eloquently put, and it's true. It's like band aids. You know, you say band aids when it's really a bandage, you know, but nevertheless, that way we, we don't need to talk about that now. Um, anyway, it's Ouija 4K of 2014. A girl is mysteriously killed after recording herself playing with an ancient Ouija board, which leads to a close group of friends to investigate this board. They later find out that some things aren't meant to be played with, especially the other side. Um, yeah. I, personally, out of all those Ouija ones, I think my favorite one, I know it's not connected to this series. This is like, the you know, its own series. But that one we both ended up watching, Ouija House. Yeah. Where it's like, it literally, it's like, it's Ouija and it's a house. And it like literally turned into a giant. Yeah. Like, I house. really like the sequel to this one, Ouija Origin of Evil. Yeah. Is mu- it's a much better movie, but I do like Olivia Cook and she's the star yeah, of this really one. Good. She's, I've been watching her in the, um, game of thrones house of dragons uh series so I, i've always i loved her in bates motel if you haven't watched bates motel she's wonderful in that so. and she was great in ready player one too so yeah yeah she's i i'll watch her in anything she's really really good what's so. that other one she did with anna anya taylor joy uh thoroughbreds that one she was good into mm, yeah. um anyway this one's got some uh good special features as shout factory does it's not as many as they usually have but it's still pretty solid uh disc one is the 4k blu-ray uh, Dolby Vision HDR presentation of the film. It's got a new audio commentary with co-writer, director, Styles White. Uh, new audio commentary with producer Brad Fuller. And then disc two is uh, the Blu-ray, and it's got Spirit Board and Evolution. Iconic of the Unknown. I'm sorry, Icon of the Unknown. Adapting the Fear. I guess those are two different special features there. Uh, theatrical trailer for Ouija and Ouija Origin of Evil, plus a reversible cover art. Gotta have that reversible cover art. Yeah. All right, release number four from Mundo Macabro. Uh, House of Terrors, a.k.a. Ghost of the Hunchback from 1965. This one's interesting. It's very early 1965 Japanese horror film. Yeah, and uh, yet we got the only trailer I could find, I think, is the Italian version of the trailer. Yeah, it was it was released odd. in, I, I think that's how most people know it, because it was released in Italy under the uh, the other a.k.a. Oh, the Ghost and, of Hunchback. Yeah, and it's um, it looks like they made a lot of haunted house movies back in the 60s, so this one's kind of cool. Uh, a man, Chonin Mataki, dies crazy after long agony, and his dead body is cremated. His widow, Yoshi, investigating on the past of her husband, goes to the mansion where he had lived, a building leftly nicknamed, I don't know what that means, yeah. Satan's Pit. A suggestive statue of Satan is situated in the atrium of the mansion, managed by a hunchback <laughs> caretaker. Explain. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Soon some visitors reach the house. The hunchback keeper warns, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. That's a weird synopsis. Uh, this one, this one does look creepy, as you said. It's a, it's a yeah. long trailer. It has some creepy stuff in it. Uh, it. Has a new 2K restoration from the original camera negative. Introduction to the film by Patrick Masias, author of Tokyo Scope, the Japanese cult film companion. Audio commentary from Tom Mees or Mez. Uh, Patrick Masias on toy horror films. I'm probably butchering all these names. Yeah. Uh, trailer exclusive new cover art from Justin Coffee. I love Justin Coffee. Justin Coffee. Yeah. That's, there's our our. Our guy, we yeah. I love that name. And uh, Mondo Macabro previews. Yeah, I kind of want to see this one though. I, I definitely want to see this one. I, I've, I've, yeah, because the Jhar is always a fun, uh, or, or he's fun, and like I want to see, you know, I want to see the one of the earlier ones because you know we're all used to those ones, uh, you know, you know Ringu and the and, yeah, uh, yeah. The grudge ones. But yeah, I want to, I kind of want to see like a really early version of it, see how it developed into what we see today. Um, Next one, another Mundo Macabre. Uh, and that's, oh, I wonder if that showed up. Did my, my light flicker? Did it, because I guess the bulb's starting to go. Did it sh- oh, actually show up on there? I, I can't tell. I was reading I don't the, think so. the screen. Oh, okay. Um, with the background, I guess you probably can't tell. Anyway, um, the next one is it's by Mondo Macabro. It's uh, In the Folds of the Flesh, 1970. It says, The guests of a villa are killed off one by one in their hosts. In Oh, by their hosts. What did I read here? Uh-huh. Okay. I'm going re- to reread that for everybody. <laughs> The guests of of a villa are killed off one by one by their hosts. 
It says incest, decapitations, and and a cyanide bath feature amongst the other bizarre delights. Delights. <laughs> well, I don't know one of those that's a delight, but um, but yeah, this one looked really, really bizarre. But not like what you said, Tim, what you'd expect boobs, women screaming, and an abundance of decapitated heads. And that is true, there's just random shots of decapitated heads. I feel like we may have covered this one on a previous. I want to say, I yes, I agree. I was like, this seems really familiar, but then again, any movie with flesh in the title like that from the 70s yeah, seems to be so the same. I apologize, this one may be a repeat that got pushed from a couple months back, but I, I didn't Maybe. double check that we, we yeah. can we can check it's okay it's fun to to say yeah. it again um this one's got a few special features on it it's got a new 2k restoration from the original camera negative documentary featurette on director sergio bergonzelli uh audio commentary from sam deegan oh wasn't uh wasn't he used, like yeah, a, he wasn't oh is it he did we remember I forgot. i'm not sure it, it, he she was a film historian but yes, uh yes. not in this instance not this one yes they don't get they don't Just, get Called Just out. by the name, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's got some trailers and Mondo Bacabro previews. All right, that we brings us to pick our week. pick of the week. Uh, Brian and I both picked this one, and I picked it mainly because it's got some great extras, and it's one I haven't. It's a Lovecraft movie I haven't seen, and so I really want to track this one down. It's from Arrow. It's called The Dunwich Horror from 1970. Uh, Dr. Henry Armitage, which is a, a famous Lovecraft character. Yeah. Uh, Sandra D. Sandra D. Who is a famous Grease character. Yeah, I, know, I was going to say. I was going <laughs> to say, look at Tim. It's, yeah. <laughs> and, and another girl who wasn't in the book. <laughs> I love who wrote this synopsis. I, yeah. Uh, visit the library of the Miskatonic University where they are studying and find a mysterious young man named Wilbur Watley, another famous Lovecraft name, trying to borrow the Necronomicon, another. Lovecraft book, a book containing ancient rites to bring alien gods to our planet. And as is as it is a public library, they let him. I can you imagine just going in and say, Hi, I'd like to check out the Necronomicon, please. Sorry, uh <laughs> Bob Bob uh, Silvers uh rented it uh, bar- borrowed it for a report last week, so it's not back yet. <laughs> oh, Sandra D offers to drive the mustachioed warlock back to his home in Dunwich where he drugs her and makes her stay to be a part in his evil ceremonies. Um, that has got to be one of the most I, interesting you know, descriptions we've gotten. And remember, we I know I feel like it, in case we have new listeners, sometimes we, we will repeat things, but you have to bear in mind this. Tim does not proofread these. It's part no. of the whole shtick with this because it's usually I get that one, but he got lucky with this one. But um, he just copies and pastes from the synopsis. I don't so even read it. I yeah. don't read it. I copy and paste it and don't even look at it because I, I want to be surprised. when. Yeah, I and I do this. I don't read it either. I will sometimes glance at it just to make sure I have the right trailer attached. Like yeah. I might quickly glance to look if something like a, an actor is mentioned in there, something to trigger to make sure I have the right. But that's about it because we like the live readings on that. So yeah. Anyway, uh, some great extras here: new 2K restoration from from the original camera negative, new audio commentary by Guy Adams and Alexandra Benedict, creators of the audio drama Arkham County. Uh, the Batman. door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the door into Dunwich: a new conversation between film historian. Hey. Stephen R. Bissett and horror author Stephen Laws, in which they discuss the Dunwich horror, Lovecraft, and their memories of seeing the film on release. And Brian, I'll let you remind our listeners who Stephen R. Bissett is. Yeah, yeah, he, he's we've had him before. He said he created he was the one that actually created a blank audio recording vessels called Bissett tapes. <laughs> he, yeah. He's yep, currently I remember that. Uh, still defending himself in copyright infringement lawsuit from Phillips Corporation and Lou Audens, creator of the cassette tape. His second endeavor was a VHS cassette tape, actually, Tim. But unfortunately, he got the patent, the, the patents, I spelled that. Oh, no, actually, this might have been just the autocorrect. The patent in just a touch too late and he missed the window. Sadly, Lou Audens passed away in March of 2021. <laughs> uh, we added that as we found out. It's always sad when we make this whole great joke and then we found out the poor person passed away. I know. So we, I know. Like we have to reference the war. The one best was that one with the uh, best, I say, uh, the one with the uh, the stunt man or something remember? oh my god that was hilarious yeah yeah that would be live on air we realized he died and that was a that was a doozy oh which led to to much hilarity not yeah, because he well, died i think that but... broke us both we could yeah. not stop laughing on that one, but... uh this says after summer after winter a new interview with science fiction and fantasy writer ruthanna emrys author of the innsmouth legacy series and i think we have a new historian here we the do. sound of cosmic terror new interview with music historian 
David Huckvale, in which he takes a closer look at Les Baxter's score for the Dunwich Horror. Who in the world is David Huckvale? Yeah, so I looked him up. He's got an interesting past here. So he used to host a musical film show of memorable stories from film sets. And he, but what's funny is he used to, to start it off, he used a DuckTales theme song where he'd go, Huckvale, ooh. And so <laughs> unfortunately, though, you know, of course, immediately sued by Disney uh, on that one. And so then he did, made him angry. So he's like when he realized that he was live on the air. So he did that. So he went, Huck smash. And he got really angry. But then and then he got promptly uh, sued by Universal and Disney. Uh, so he. Poor guy. He, yeah, he, he he I think so. That's part, at that point. He just went into like being a nice, modest film historian. No extracurricular shows or songs or anything. So. Well, to round this out, we got a theatrical trailer, image gallery, reversible sleeve featuring originally original and newly commissioned artwork by Luke Priest. And first pressing only, Illustrated Collector's booklet featuring new writing by film critics Johnny Maines and Jack Sargent. I think Johnny yeah. Maines was, became a film historian at one yeah. point, too, didn't he? I think he did, too. Yeah. So that was the week of January 10th. We had Fear of the Walking Dead Season 7, Ouija 4K, House of Terrors, a.k.a. Ghost of the Hunchback, In the Folds of the Flesh, 1970, and our pick of the week, Arrows, the Dunwich Horror I will also mention they're releasing, for some odd reason, maybe it's the anniversary or something, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, Steelbook. Yeah, I think they've been kind of going uh, once a year. They've been kind of, uh, uh, or if you think about it, because remember, at one point, there was a Friday the 13th movie coming out every year. So when there's like a 30th anniversary, yeah. every year after that, for a few of them are going to be there. I think after four, there was like, the, there might have been a two-year break in between four and five. So I don't know if five will get its Steelbook next year or the year after, but. <laughs> yeah. All right, I mean, moving really, on. in all honesty, to keep getting these one-offs on Friday the 13th, just buy that amazing just buy set. That set. Especially yeah. when so many times it's on sale for like 80 bucks, which is a steal. Yeah, it's It was so a steal good. at what we paid for it, 130 or whatever, so. Yeah. Uh, so that brings us to January 17th. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and mention they're releasing a Cloverfield 4K Steelbook and a They Live Steelbook uh, this week. I usually We usually don't cover those on here because they're usually the same film and extras as you would normally get. They're just yeah. in the... Best Buy exclusive steelbook form or whatever, which uh, don't get me started on steelbooks. I, I know if, if you collect them, they're I mean, that's great. You know, I, I can understand the appeal, but for me personally, I just don't like the way they sit on the shelf. I know I regret every steelbook I purchase now because it does stand out. On yeah, the it's shelf. just. And, and they're all different. They're not, there's no uniformity. It's just it's yeah. Crazy. I mean, Disney used to do a sm- a fun thing at Best Buy one time when they would release the steelbook, but you'd get it as a extra thing. Like it would compact with it, but you didn't have to display it in it. You had the option. The, the only ones I really loved was back in the day, Anchor Bay. This was not Blu-ray. This was deep before Blu-ray on DVD. They would do the um. I don't remember what they call them now. But they're they Anchor Bay did them, and they were the big tins. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I had Halloween five. I had Hellraiser. Oh, yeah, I had four or five. I had Evil Dead two. I think Evil Dead. I had uh, Heather's. Um, the, I think I had actually. I had the Beyond. I had, and I ended up selling. I think I sold most of them when Blu-ray came out, and I sold them for a pretty penny because you couldn't get them anymore. But yeah. uh, I kind of wish I'd hung on to them now. But yeah, those were those are the only kind of steel book things that I ever ever got into. All right, so January seventeenth, we only have two releases this week. Uh, one of which is going to be our pick of the week. Uh, but first, we had Wellgo USA's Death Knot from 2021. Hari and her sister returned to the village where they were born after the death of their mother, a practitioner of black magic. But the inexplicable suicides of several villagers caused the hostility towards the two to explode. Mm-hmm. I don't have any clue what's going on in this trailer. It looks a little yeah. creepy. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but it, yeah, it definitely is very, con- very confusing trailer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Next one is, of course, uh, our only other one. So, but it, it happened to be our pick of the week, and that is from Cranked Up Films, which may be a new. Uh, yeah, I don't remember uh, them. Release company, I think. Um, yeah, I don't remember them. Um, anyway, and it's called After She Died from 2022. It says a grieving teenager is horrified to discover that her father's new girlfriend looks identical to her dead mother. Um, eh, you know, it's like Tim and I both were kind of like, looks okay doesn't uh i mean it's nothing special but it has some extras and versus the other one which didn't have any extras and we didn't know what was going on this one kind of won by default i mean this was like i mean it was kind of almost like a default way to get <laughs> yeah. the big of the week but yeah. anyway it's got an audio commentary by writer director jack dingen uh feels like spring 2019 short film by jack dingen 
deleted scenes, extras, and I'm oh, sorry, extended scenes and trailers. All right, so that's sorry, my, my, I accidentally tapped the screen and it shifted, so I didn't remember what the words. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, January seventeenth, just death knot, and after she died, our pick of the week. All right, moving right along to January twenty fourth. Uh, we have this is our biggest week uh, with eight releases and the first one up this one's kind of funny uh this is our nope that's our pick of the week i'm going to tell you that yeah, at the yeah, end. Yes. sorry about yep. that uh our our second uh runner up here is uh from shop factory this was going to be my pick of the week if i had not picked the one we did yeah uh, and that was freaky 4k that was of course the 2020 vehicle uh i really enjoyed this movie uh i, I watched it like Two or three times because the kids kept wanting to watch it over and over yeah. again. It was on cable a lot, so yeah, I like, like managed to catch it about at least twenty times at the last year. <laughs> uh, after swapping bodies with a deranged serial killer, a young girl in high school discovers she has less than twenty-four hours before the change becomes permanent. And uh, this one has some good extras. Uh, disc one is the four K Blu-ray, has an audio commentary with co-writer and director Christopher Landon. Disc two is the regular Blu-ray, which has deleted scenes, crafting the kills feature at split personalities, Millie versus the Butcher. Final Girl Reframed, and Christopher Landon's Brand of Horror, along with a theatrical trailer. Yes. Uh, the next one is uh, from Full Moon, and that is Puppet Master 3, Toulon's Revenge 4K uh, from 1991. That's interesting that um, they just randomly released a, a 4K I, Puppet I Master. I kept looking. I was expecting during the month to see like other ones released alongside like at least one and two i'm i'm wondering if this was the first one that had like maybe a better i don't yeah i don't know and i don't know of it yeah better quality so have they, they had released money. maybe they've already released the first two i don't know they might have i you know i kind of vaguely now remember there might have been a puppet master uh one and two release um a couple of this uh, maybe like last year or some I mean, point this is a great entry though in the puppet master series, yeah yeah so. no this is actually a very influential it is a big one it gives a lot yeah. of, it gives a big origin story so to speak of how some of the puppets came to be um so anyway it's set in berlin during world war ii the nazi regime is attempting to develop a drug that will animate the dead in order to use in their war effort tulan arouses suspicion as a nazi dissident and his secret is discovered during a Nazi raid on his home, Toulon's beautiful wife is murdered. Toulon re vows revenge with the help of his animated puppets. This movie gives a new perspective on Toulon and his friends. And um, yeah, I mean, this one really was a good, uh, good origin story, especially after the first two. You know, it kind of like really the series is really cranking going along. And then you get this uh, one where it could have been a step down, but it turned out to be a really solid entry in it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that was a fun series when we re we watched. I was those. just thinking about that. I, I kind of missed the whole series. Like, I'm gonna have to go back and watch. Well, some did of you these watch the? You got to watch the 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 net latest one, the one uh, Doctor Death that they released, which oh, yeah, ties back that, yeah. to actually um one of the older Puppet Masters, which I, I will not uh spoil that surprise because it's one of the last. You know, it's towards the ending of the film, but there's a lot of cool surprises. It's what, you know, I think I, I watched it for the horror challenge and it kind of gives you, you know, what you expect from a full moon and a puppet master movie. Um, and just, I love the fact that even now they are still cranking these out, you know, and, they're fun. and it seems they're so like they're reinvigorating the series. Cause I think there's going to be more after this one. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm down for whatever they want to release. I, I love all these. They're, they're, I don't even want to call them guilty pleasures. Like I, they're, like I yeah. genuinely enjoy them, not because Oh, they're so bad. They're good. I actually really like their yeah. fun movies. Yeah, and I was so glad I, we did that thing where we could get the the box set. Um, oh and my I, gosh! I, yeah. I pieced together the other ones. I just now the only one I'm missing really is um is the new one, Doctor Death, which I don't know if it's released yet on Blu-ray. I'm sure it will. Um, and you know I don't have uh because I don't think it's ever been released on Blu-ray, right? Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys. It was only on Yeah, like, that's the one that was very rare to... It was kind of like, it's not even a real part of the franchise. It's it's kind of like yeah. unaffiliated with that. Um, you can see it, though. It's it's it, it's on YouTube a lot. And I think at one point, it, every so often, I think it appears on the Full Moon site. Um, but anyway, uh, and once it was on Tubi, actually, also, well, for a little bit of time. But anyway, um, so this is uh, this is a short HD transfer, uh, one to eighty-five to one widescreen. Oh, see, so I we could be right on that if we if they didn't release the f the first two, it could be because this one was the first one maybe filmed uh, with better camera. Um, anyway, a uh, special introduction by Charles Band. I gotta get his bi biography 
I need to get that. Oh, I bet that's a good reason. Yeah, I think if I get some Amazon uh, credit for the holidays or something, that might be one of the things I, I purchase. I'm dying to read that because, I'm, you know, that guy's a fascinating guy. And he's, you know, oh, yeah. He's, He's a, you know, is a legend in, in the horror industry. Um, we've got an audio commentary by David. De- it, oh, I, it's we always say Dakota, but I heard it's, I think it's Deca- Decato. Decato. Yeah, because uh, yeah. we were told it was Decato. Um, and see Cor- Courtney Joyner, uh, full length video zone. Uh, I think that's uh, like a magazine, uh, like a video magazine uh, that Full Moon puts out. Um, Killer Puppet Master Montage, rare 1997 Puppet Master action figure commercial. Wow. I kind of want to see what that looks like. I had like. those action figures. Too. Actually, is that on our, it might be in our set for all I know. Might be in our set. It uh, could be, yeah. Uh, uh, HD trailer, full moon trailer park, uh, reversible sleeve incorporating original artwork and Graham Humphrey's artwork and a collectible booklet. Nice. Well, also from full moon this week, we've got Scorpion with two tails from 1982. Joan has nightmares of Etruscan sacrifices. She knows very well the Etruscan language, and her husband Arthur is an archaeologist studying Etruscan tombs. In a nightmare, she foresees her husband's death, and Arthur is then killed with the same way the Etruscans <laughs> killed their sacrifice victims. How many times can we put Etruscan I know, in so, a paragraph? Someone likes the, the word Etruscans. Uh, I don't know even if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm just going. I just went with one yeah, version. That's and... good to me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's probably like Etruscan. Yeah, it's probably that, something that. crazy. Um, there's probably like archaeologists out there going, "My God, people, I know, how like stupid can you be?" Yeah. Uh, this one has a uh, newly remastered uh, uh, print. something. <laughs> yeah, something's, new, something's newly remastered. Something's newly remastered. The movie's yeah. newly remastered. Rare deleted scenes and trailers. Okay, the next one is from uh, one that appears every now and then as Unearthed Films, and it's Invitation Only. Um, that's the name of the movie, not that this Blu-ray is just Invitation. <laughs> um, it says, five people arrive at a party, fully unaware that the special night is just a cover for an evening of torture and murder. Um, yeah, this is a, eh. <laughs> this, was a this one's literally a, eh. Yeah. Eh. Eh. So that's so cool. that's eh. the advantage of when you see the video, you could actually see us go, yeah yeah you actually see our reaction fully yeah. um yeah it's they're, they're basically a trailers and making of of what we have no idea it's like <laughs> rodney <laughs> dating film remember oh she's real talented of what i have no idea okay um <laughs> oh next from our good friends at rlj entertainment glorious from 2022 this is of course the rebecca mckendry yes uh directed movie i really enjoyed this one uh I heartbroken see it, though. oh it's good it's good but it's, it's got crazy. the mother from the ulog in it Oh, you're She's right. There. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. Uh, a heartbroken man finds himself trapped in a bathroom with a strange voice who says he may be the only hope in stopping a terrible, terrible event. It's it's completely off the wall, kind of in the same way. Not quite as crazy as Yule Log, but yeah. uh, if you like those kind of just bizarro horror movies, you're going to really like this one. Yeah, well, you don't ever want to really like, um, I mean, it, it's already frightening enough being in public bathroom sometimes, let alone yeah. when someone starts talking to you. You know, yeah. I usually try not to... Uh, engage in that kind of conversation um, uh, no no extras on that one though yeah well they you know you know rlj though they might just pop them on there and don't tell they you could that. yeah there's always a chance but uh next release is from cleopatra i don't know if that's ever been we've had that on there before but it's very oh, rare yeah oh, okay uh and this is the ghosts of monday monday uh, to 2022. Um, and that is the Ghost of Monday tells a chilling story of a group of U.S. filmmakers who travel to Cyprus to film a documentary in the tragically famous Hotel Gula, a once popular resort where more than 100 people died in a mysterious circumstances. What begins as just another day at the office will eventually turn into a terrifying journey into the unknown. Kind of seems interesting, though. This I one... love Ghost Hunter premise movies. Because I like ghost hunter shows, so I like movies that are about ghost hunters. So yeah. that, that's all. That's like an automatic ticket for me to watch. Yeah, it. I think that's like that's why, and that's been a, a good, uh, good movies uh, lately with those uh, that kind of premise. Of course, with you know Deadstream, we loved. Even though I mean, I know he's not a true ghost hunter, but you know that kind of. I've still got a. Haunted. I've got a story that I started years ago, and when I say years ago, I'm talking maybe. 10 to 15 years ago, maybe longer. And I really need to finish it, but it was about a group of ghost hunters going to this house, just like you would. I mean, typical opening of just like house on haunted Hill or any of those, but I had a great idea for what happens in there. I've got one of my goals for 2023 is to finish my short stories. Yes. 
Yeah, and I, I have a couple of, as Tim, uh, our group, little group knows too, uh, I have like about maybe like 12 harm ideas that I, oh, yeah. at least yeah. I started one of them already. At least I have a, one is in motion. And I think that's t- uh, Tim and I, it's kind of like our personal arcs for this season. Um, hopefully we'll be able to at least get one of the things uh, completed. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, can, I'm determined. Uh, I'm going to like set like, I'm going to do it just like I do workouts or anything else. I'm going to be like, I have to write a page a day. Yeah. Who told us that? Who told us that, that that's the way they do that? Um, one of the guests we had on said that. Yeah, because we had the one of the authors uh, we had on may have been, but I've heard a lot of authors say that. I mean, you got to treat it like a job. You, yeah. you just crank out a page a day. You can always rewrite and always get so caught up in the rewriting as I'm writing and you can't do that. You just got to put it on the page go back later yeah so. i mean the, the advantage they have is that if they are writers it's like that's all they're doing you know it's hard when you have a regular job to kind of like exactly yeah kind of get through the day and the last thing you want to do is something more that feels like work when you get home yeah. it, and that's it's... my biggest thing it's like i have it's like i know about three o'clock um i well actually i should take it back usually like in the morning at like maybe like 9 or 10 a.m when i'm at work i'm like oh i gotta get through this day i can't wait to get home i'm gonna do this 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 then by three o'clock i'm like knocking stuff off the list i'm like all right maybe if i could just do this then by the time i get home it's like eat uh lay on the couch and <laughs> next i know i'm, I'm yeah. dozed off and uh <laughs> wake up and if it's a podcast day i have maybe just enough time to review uh and yeah. prep the rundown and it's it's terrible it's like i mean you know because it's know just Tim discipline is, I know we I mean, look very youthful, but Tim and I are getting up there in age. Yeah. Uh, me a, l- a little faster. There's a lot but, of gray um, in this beard. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it, it's tough. But I think, yeah, I think uh, one page a day is not an insurmountable uh, task. Well, you Even as tired as you are. Treat it like, you know, treat it like I do workouts, which I'm not great at. But even like with like the rowing machine and stuff, you know, you say, oh, I want to do at least 20 minutes a day. If you can't do 20 minutes a day. Get on there for five minutes. It's better than no minutes. And if you can't do a page a day, do half a page or yeah. do a paragraph. You know, you at least you're making progress. So. Yeah, and I think I'm going to do like, I mean, I'm going to really try and push myself to do the strategy that we've discussed. Because Tim and I, it's so funny how we just keep finding more and more reasons why we were destined to be friends because we have <laughs> such weird simil- similarities like that. And both, I do the same thing. I try and edit it. Um. Like while I'm I'm writing it, and you can't do that. We've been told that by writers. They say just go do it, and then yeah. worry about it. Go back and do it. And like like so, the first time I think I think I went a bit through about five pages um, for the project of uh, the main project I wanted to get out uh, this uh, get done this year. And now when I just wrote, I mean, other than then going back to just make sure that I I had a line in there that I wanted, so I didn't forget it. I pretty much just went, kept going forward kept going forward maybe checking some spelling just because i hate the little mm-hmm. uh like you know the, the little like autocorrect like lines and and things like that it bothers me when i do reread it so i i will probably i usually go back and at least fix all the spelling things i can see but that's it and then i'm going to just keep going forward you know and then when i'm done i my my plan is to um maybe go through it once give it a check to see if there's anything I personally see there that I want to change or that I've decided to, to that might be better. Then I'm going to, you know, send it to you guys through the, uh, you know, I want the, our, our, our little group there, our, our text feed to, to all read it and kind of give their opinions. That's the because, way to do it. Because then, you know, I want it to eventually be like kind of all of us contributing anyway to it. Yeah. So I think that's, that's the way I'm going to do it. And I got to force myself. I can't, I, I don't care. Like, like even if it's like halfway through this thing, and I'm like, oh god, it's gonna it needs something, it needs something more, it needs something more. I, well, if I'll find it eventually, what it needs. So I'm just gonna, but I'm gonna keep going, and then we'll we'll do it that way. So, All thank right, you for coming yeah. to me and Tim's TED talk here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, next up from Dark Side releasing, we have Blood Dynasty from 2017, and this follow up to Blood for Arena and Queen of Blood, the vampire oh. arena rises again like a ghost from her watery grave to bring bloodlust and madness to a lonely woman living in a seaside motel. Super micro budget. Yeah. I give them a little bit of points for that opening scene with the woman coming out of the water was pretty cool, but yeah. Uh, ugh, this one well, there's crazy. their budget right there. Um, <laughs> at first, when I saw the title, I thought it was like a, a like a horror version of uh, the, the show Dynasty, but not no. even close. <laughs> no. Who stabbed Jr.? No. Yeah. I think no, that, that was Dallas. Dallas. That, that was Dallas. Dallas. Oh my god. That's gosh. okay. Well, they're 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 very See, uh, yeah. They, they were. They what came... was the one that Dallas was 
was it not slant when Dallas was connected to another one, wasn't it? Or is was it, it just... not landing? Was it one of it was one of the, the reason it... I get them mixed up is because they always came. I thought they didn't they was come dynasty. I think they all came like didn't Dallas come on and then Dynasty came on right after or something. No, like I, right well, there. I remember at one point it was like it was uh Dukes of Hazards, Wonder Woman, Incredible Hulk, and and Dallas were on on a Friday night near at least oh, New man. York. There was That's that right. block of TV, so there was usually grilled to grilled, yeah. Glued to the TV from like seven to eleven <laughs> on Friday nights. Um, that you know what? Now we may be thinking. So there was Dynasty. Uh, there were two Dynasty shows. I know that it was Dynasty Two, the Colbys. Oh um, God, but Dallas, right. I yeah. thought had a sequel to it as well, or it's a spinoff show. And now I have to look it up. And you're going to see it live. Me it was not, not being rude to team. It is, it's not slanting. Oh, it is. It was. Yeah, it? yeah, it was not slanting. Oh, okay. So I can stop. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you that Dallas was was a fun show, though, growing up when we were. I watched it with my grandparents. I didn't really understand it at the time, but I was I'd still watch it. I mean, it it was one of who shot Jr. thing. Yeah. And I think it was probably one of the I mean, I know soap operas probably did this all the time. Uh, Maybe they didn't. I don't know. It was one of the big watch, but it had to be one of the most famous ever, like kind of retcons on a TV show in history with the whole, I mean, they literally took you on a whole, what, one or two year long storyline only to it to be a dream because, uh, you know, they, they got uh, Bobby Ewing back. Uh, What was it? Patrick Duffy. Was that his name? Yeah. Patrick. Yeah. (laughs) Why did I know that so fast? Geez. It reminds me of the, uh, when you say Patrick Duffy, I just laugh because I think of the South Park episode. Where that monster lived in the woods and his leg was Patrick Duffy. Oh, right, right. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, and he he came back to the show, and you know, of course, his character that was dead. So oh, there was they, such a controversy over that. I remember that. Yeah, because people are like, "What do you?" Because there were like full on major characters that then yeah. now don't exist anymore. That people like, so it was really weird. And of course, the, the Who Shot Jr. Uh, was like oh, a revolutionary yeah. thing at a time. I mean, it, it like captured the world. You know, I mean, people were like, you know, it was a big news story. And I still, from what I remember, it was still kind of a letdown to everybody. And yeah, it, it just was, yeah. because it was one of those things where the buildup became way bigger than probably they even wanted. Uh, and back then, remember, you didn't have the internet, so there was no speculation no, like no, you, you can speculate. now. Yeah. So it was on the news. People on the news would guess it. You know, it was it was unusual <laughs> for the time. We're really very, dating ourselves. Yeah. But I'm telling you, like now, you do a show like that. Like I remember when Lost was on, and Lost would have this cliffhanger at the end of the season, and everyone would be like on message boards and typing for a year long, predicting what could happen. Back then, you didn't have that. You just literally would like bump into people on the street and in the stores and say like hey who do you think shot jay that was you know? true water cooler talk like that's what it you was, talked about yeah. at work yeah yeah interesting you, know, you kind of miss those days a little bit don't you i i miss i, I definitely miss certain aspects of it. the convenience today is wonderful yeah. and the ability to just you know if you have a question you can actually just look it up and, you, and know instantly yes. versus back then when you just settled with the fact that you would just never know <laughs> yeah or my, or my you have to go to like microfiche you're like a library you're like i'm not gonna do that yeah, I'll just, i'm not I'll bothered. Just, i don't need I'll, to know i'll yeah. just never know that's fine yeah at some level though it probably led to a lot more like creativity in your own mind of what what yeah. would happen because you really like for all you knew that was the reality because you did ne- until you got proven otherwise somehow you know you that's what it was but um and it's funny because it made it interesting for movies like like i remember like the star wars movies you know you got like tidbits from that if you join the lucasfilm fan club you got bantha tracks which was that magazine and that would give you some tips and that was the closest thing i think to like really seeing like oh what's you know what what could this mean and i still remember the um the first shot of uh return of the jedi that i saw before it came out was it was Luke at the edge of the skiff with a uh, you know, weak way poking at him behind and, you know, Luke with his hands behind his back. I'm like, Oh my God, this movie's going to be awesome. What's <laughs> happening? You know, like why is Luke captured? Who is that guy? You, and you knew no context to it at all. Cause it was, it, you know, it wasn't like there was an internet to check. Like you imagine that picture like leaked like now, right? Like there'd be a million people say, like coming up with reasons why, like, this happened and what, who that character is and making up all speculations and fan fiction before the movie and came out. And that's mostly what starts all the arguments about a movie nowadays because people expected something 
the director doesn't deliver it and they all seem to they almost get like offended that they didn't give them the movie that they wanted you know it's like yeah so it's kind of it's kind of weird but um but anyway yeah so en- enough of that uh, uh kind of segue there but um but i think we go back now to our pick of the week right yep it's time Did for I, the pick of the week do i do this or you did that's you oh it is okay it's me hi um I'm, I'm the the reader it's me okay uh that's a little tim uh <laughs> Taylor Swift tim, tim loves his tay tay as we mm. know um i can't believe i said tay tay okay uh anyway this one is from lionsgate and this is but actually it's funny it's release company lionsgate but it's really that vestron um it's a vestron edition i believe it is yeah yeah whenever we say lionsgate it could be their vestron brand which makes some remarkably they do value priced sets like the vestron releases are really really good yeah, I just bought uh, Earth Girls Are Easy for like eight dollars or something, eight ninety eight or something on Amazon, and it's one of those Vestron releases. So, and it's I think it's got the digital code and everything. Um, they yeah, those are you can't uh, you can't don't snooze on those Vestron releases because um they're usually packed with like I think like my yeah. maximum overdrive is that. But um, yeah, that's a but um, list. yeah, and I pre ordered this one the same time with the, the dentist collection because I'm like, it's twenty dollars, you're getting two movies, and it's a Vestron release, and it's always got fun. And there's incredible features. artwork, like the yeah. cover art is ridiculous, like so much better than the actual movies. The artwork, yeah, is so this is yeah, this is a very under, I feel like underrepresented in the the fandom of releases because everyone talks Shout Factory, everyone talks um, you know, Vinegar Syndrome, Severin, and don't get me wrong, those companies are amazing and vestron is is like one that like kind of like makes these great special editions that are kind of like just sneak under the radar that you don't realize sometimes how good they actually are yeah. but um so anyway we'll, we'll go through this and, and this this description is it's got tim and i uh our heart to a t there it says yeah. well there's a drill there's a way <laughs> yep. So uh, whether well, it's a drill, this way, yeah. Uh, Corbin Burton stars in this homo- as a homicidal dentist, Doctor Alan Finestone, in these two horror favorites available for the first time on Blu-ray. So it's not only this is the first time it's actually available on Blu-ray, and it's exactly, in yeah. That's sets, why this one's so so good. Yeah, so that's why I ordered it right away. I mean, it's like I think it's like nineteen ninety nine for this. I mean, that's for two yeah, movies. The, well, wait till you hear these extras. You'll yeah, know I mean, this is bargain. a massive amount of of stuff. Uh, it says, it says audio commentary with director Brian Yuzna uh, and special makeups uh, effects supervisor Anthony C. Ferrante. Uh, isolated score selections and audio interviews with composer Alan Howarth and director of photography Levy, or is it Levy? I don't know, Levy Isaacs. Uh, Doctor is Insane, an interview with actor Corbin Burnson. Medical Malpractice, an interview with co writer Dennis Paoli. Mouths of Madness, interviews with special makeup effects supervisor Anthony C. Ferrante and makeup effects artist J.M. Logan. A trailer and still gallery. And that's just disc one for the dentist. Now you get disc two, which the dentist two is on there. And you will get another audio commentary with uh, director Brian Yuzna, special effects makeup artist Anthony C. Ferrante. Isolated score selections and audio interviews with composer Alan Howarth and editor Christopher Roth. That's interesting. You get the composer and the editor together. That's probably actually yeah. a really interesting conversations. You know, yeah. Because he probably has to edit in musical cues and all this stuff. That's I would love to actually. I'm looking forward to listening to that uh, commentary. Uh, Jamie's new neighbor, an interview with actress Jillian McWhorter. Uh, Tale of Two Dentists, an interview with producer Pierre David. Mouths of Madness, The Dentist 2, interviews with special effect makeup uh, supervisor Anthony C. Ferrante and makeup effects artist J.M. Logan, and a trailer and a still gallery. And, I mean, while number of special features are, are pretty modest, but the, it's the I think it's the quality of these that you're getting mm-hmm. each a commentary track. You're getting um, those isolated score selection ones, which are kind of cool in the audio. You know, you're getting a extra little, like... Um, interviews about how they do stuff like that and I, I think it's just i like when they do that and it seems like they they you know this set was always planned to be a, a two disc set like this with both movies the way it has that um the mouse of madness uh little mini series guy i guess you know for each film so i i yeah i, I, yeah, I, I mean this one had to be pick of the week i just think it was like it, it's everything in a blu-ray release that you want like a first time blu-ray uh you know release of something so yeah, that's a that's a great one, I think, for the pick of the week. Um, so to recap, the week of January 24th, we had Freaky 4K from Shout Factory, Puppet Master 3, Toulon's Revenge 4K from Full Moon, Scorpion with Two Tails, which is a 1982 Full Moon release, Unearth Films Invitation Only 2009, Glorious from 2022, that's the Rebecca McKendry 
uh, film that I highly recommend you check out. Uh, the Ghost of Monday from 2022 and Blood Dynasty from 2017. Our pick of the week was the Dennis Collection from Lionsgate Vestron, which is the first or the only two <laughs> dentist movies. Yes. So those are uh, those are a lot of fun. All right. So that brings us to our last week. And uh, we uh, we differed on our pick of the week for this one, which yeah. I, I don't I don't blame Brian one bit for his pick of the week. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's amazing. So we'll start things off. Uh, we had uh, you guys remember the Eurocrypt of Christopher Lee box set that we both bought that was so amazing. Well, they did release uh, Crypt of the Vampire 1964 and Castle of the Living Dead 1964 as standalone versions of uh, out of that Christopher Lee set. So those are cool if you didn't yeah. get the chance to pick up that box set. We had a reissue of Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse from 2015. And then I'm going to special mention this one because we went back and forth on whether to include this on the disc member mint, but ultimately I decided not to include it. Uh, Mondo Macabro is coming out with a Bollywood horror box set. This looks amazing. It's, it's six or seven Bollywood horror films. And uh, they are also releasing them, I believe, as single singles if you don't want to buy the entire box is, set yeah but this is the one right they didn't really list all the special features yet. yeah 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 was... we well i looked it up on the actual site and they couldn't even give you a firm date as to whether it was going to even be released in january they were shooting for january slash february and without a definitive date this the features weren't finalized i just didn't feel comfortable putting it on the rundown so we'll hopefully we'll revisit it in february and they'll have a more complete uh complete lineup of what's actually going to be released on that but look be on the lookout for it. bollywood horror box set it looks really interesting i bet yeah, those the, are some the trailers things. i was i did find some of the trip when we first had it on there i looked at some of the trailers it looked kind of cool so yeah all right so first up from warner brothers we have one i'm really wanting to see from this year bones and all the story follows 16 year old Marin yearly on a cross country as she searches through dark unseen corners of America to find a father she's never met in an attempt to understand why she has killed a series of friends. This one looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to see this one. Unfortunately, no real special features though. No, nah, no extras on that one. Oh, it's Warner brothers. They tend to just kind of. Yeah. They, the they, they do bare bones and all. Yeah. yeah. Hey, seriously. <laughs> they, 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 they definitely should have released this one then. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, next one's from Paramount. It's Event Horizon 4K uh, from 1997. Uh, that's one of the movies that a lot of people get this really creeped out moment yeah. uh, from those aliens. But anyway, um, but it's uh, when a rescue crew investigates a spaceship that disappeared into a black hole and has now returned, things start to take an increasingly horrific turn. Uh, this one's kind of one of those classic sci-fi horrors that uh, everyone has seen. Uh, disc one, uh, 4K Blu-ray, uh, 4K restoration of the film. The disc two is a Blu-ray. And this one has an audio commentary by, by uh, director Paul W.S. Anderson and producer Jeremy Bolt. Uh, the making of uh, Event Horizon, five featurettes, or featurettes, uh, because they had an extra U, uh, and poor Tim didn't uh, remember. He just copies and pastes. Um, the point of no return, the filming of Event Horizon with director commentary and secrets with optional director commentary. That's cool. I like when they give you the option there. Usually I pick yes, but um, <clears throat> the unseen event horizon, the unfilmed rescue scene, plus conceptual art and the original trailer. All right. Next up from shout. Oh, nope. I'm going to skip that one. That's my pick of the week. Sorry about that. Moving right along from Severn Films, Blood for Dracula from 1974. You know, I love my birth year horror movies. Yes. Uh, this one is Paul Morrissey's moralistic take, also known as Andy Warhol's Dracula, by the way. Uh, it Paul is Mor- it, right. I thought that was it. It is, yeah. When I watched the trailer. I'm like, wait a minute, this is yeah. Um, I've seen this. <laughs> Paul Morrissey's moralistic take on modern values is a brash mixture of humor, horror, and sex, and a revelation to fans of the horror film. And Blood for Dracula, the infamous Count searches Italy for virgin blood. I've actually never seen this. It, it's one of those that I should have seen, but it just keeps flying under my radar for some reason. I I, th- uh, I felt like I saw it. In the, I've seen it twice. I think like once. I think I saw it. I was on uh, cable or something or. Like an AMC, like one of those. But then also, I I, I think I might have seen this in one of the art theaters. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah, correctly. I, could see I think that. it was like a double feature of this Andy Warhol's Dracula and Andy Warhol's Frankenstein, possibly. Yeah, know. yeah. This one has a uh, 4K restoration of the film. It has a, actually has the CD original motion picture soundtrack composed, orchestrated, and conducted by Claudio Gizzi. Uh Transhuman Flesh and Blood interview with director Paul Morrissey. Rubinia's Homecoming interview and location visit with actress Stefania Cassini. 
Blood for Udo, interview with actor Udo Kier, which I love him and anything. Yeah. Uh, a Little Big Joe, interview with actor Joe D'Alessandro, conversation with a vampire, audio interview with actress Melina Vukotic, Bloodthirsty, interview with assistant director Paolo Pietrangeli, Black Cherry, interview with art director Gianni Giovagi. Via G- oh, wow. That one, got, <laughs> that one got me. Gianni Giovagnoni. The Blood of These Whores, interview with Murder's <laughs> Passions author Stephen Thrower, who's also one of our film historians yes, on occasion. Not today. Uh, Sad Romantic Dracula, interview with soundtrack composer Claudio Gitzi, The Roman Connection, interview with producer Andrew Brownsburg, and trailers. Wow, that's a packed disc. Yeah. Uh, next one, we, we summoned them earlier, and now they, they said, yeah, you called? And uh, that's seven films here <laughs> uh, with the release of Legacy of Blood, a.k.a. Legacy of Horror from 1978. Horror movie about three wicked sisters, and that they're now all I'm thinking is the Stygian witches, of course, yeah. when I said <laughs> yeah. uh, Three wicked... Give me the eye! <laughs> uh, have a horror movie about three wicked sisters and their equally unsavory husbands who all arrive at a remote inn where they mean uh, where they mean to attend the reading of their uncle's will. One by one, their heirs are dispatched by an unknown killer, also known as Legacy of Horror. Legacy of Blood is a remake of director Andy Milligan's own 1968 films, The Ghastly Ones. Wasn't there a set of Andy Milligan films? There was, yeah, yeah, there was. Yep, yep, there was. Um, this one looks. I think it looks bad in a kind of a good way. Like it looks yeah. so really bad, but kind of, I still kind of want to see. Yeah. It. There's something cool about it. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. that you want to see. Uh, it's, it's got a couple of features on it. Uh, Blood or horror uh, interview with executive producer, Ken Lane legacy of Chris, an interview with actor Chris Broderick. I wonder if it's related to Matthew. We'll have to check that. Uh, and one TV spot. All right. Well, I don't know that's... what spot it is on the TV, but <laughs> maybe it's one of them. Left, upper left, you know, where the little DVD logo slides in. Um, my pick of the week was Shout Factory's Dawn of the Dead 4K Collector's Edition. And this is the 2004 Dawn of the Dead, which is a surprisingly good remake. Uh, oh, that's actually, great. Remember how yeah. popular it was? Like, yeah. yeah it's like a big hit. It's one of those. I think because that trailer was so good. They almost like the trailer was almost like the first sequence. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was. It was I, I don't know. For such a. I can't think right off the top of my head of a remake of such a classic beloved horror movie that was as well received as this one was because yeah, most of the time I mean, they're just terrible. But this one, this one stands on its own as a really good remake. Right. Yeah. Um, the dead have become zombies stalking in an endless quest to feed on those who remain alive. Remake of the 1978 film, of course, uh, disc one is a uncut Blu-ray 4k new 4k master struck from the original camera negative and audio commentary with director Zack Snyder and producer Eric Newman. Disc two is the regular Blu-ray. Again, unrated cut. Introduction to the unrated cut with director Zack Snyder. Splitting Headaches, Anatomy of, of Exploding Heads. Attack of the Living Dead. Raising the Dead. Andy's Lost Tape. Special Report Zombie Invasion. Undead and Loving It, a mockumentary. Drawing the Dead featurette. Storyboard comparisons and a hidden Easter egg. Ooh. Ooh. Disc three is the regular theatrical cut on Blu-ray. Take a Chance on Me, an interview with actor Ty Burrell. Gun for Hire, an interview with writer James Gunn. You forget, you see all these names, James Gunn, uh, yeah. Zack Snyder, who are so famous for the Marvel uh, movies and stuff, and, uh, DC, Marvel and DC. No, the, the, they're well, both, DC. yeah, both. Yeah, both, yeah, I guess, because yeah. uh, James, James Gunn, Gunn for switched, Marvel yeah. and Zack Snyder for DC. But, um, and, and, and you forget that they, you know, this was one of the first, uh, first times they, they became well known. Yeah. Uh, Punk Rock and Zombie, an interview with actor Jake Weber. Killing Time at the Mall, a special effects of Dawn of the Dead, an interview with special makeup effects artist David Anderson and Heather Langenkamp Anderson. Uh, deleted scenes with optional commentary by director Zack Snyder and producer Eric Newman and theatrical trailer and still gallery. So that's that's just a great movie. I like that one. I think this is a fantastic collector's edition with three disc set. So that was why it got my pick of the week. Yeah, it, it, it could have been mine too. I just, I think I did it just because I like this trailer. Um, I uh, want to see this next movie so bad. <laughs> yeah, this one is from Kino Lorber. It's the Asphyx. And uh, it says, Hugo is a brilliant turn of the century scientist, loved and respected by his family and friends, admired by his colleagues. But he is a man quickly becoming obsessed with a curious and frightening question. What is the mysterious apparition found in the photographs of his dying subjects? Hugo brings a family to a boat. Uh, sorry, oh, brings to a family boating party his newest invention, a motion picture camera. The party quickly turns into disaster as he captures on film the tragic drowning of his son and his fiance. When the film is replayed later, the same ghost-like presence appears. It flies towards his son and vanishes inside his dying body. Has Hugo discovered the asphyx? 
the spirit of the dead described in Greek mythology. I mean, just the premise is great. It's such a cool yeah. thing too. But yeah, the, the the trailer, like Tim said, is is so ridiculous, but it looks really cool. And I love that at the end it goes more than a myth, more than a maybe. <laughs> yeah, so it's like uh, it's got it's got a funny tagline. Um, this has a standard UK and extended US cut, which is usually the opposite. It's mm-hmm. Funny, the US cut is usually uh, the shorter yeah one and it's usually the european uncut or something uh it's got a new audio commentary by novelist critic kim new oh yeah kim newman uh and writer uh editor stephen jones both uh film historians at one point technically i guess kim newman here is just a novelist critic yeah yeah so they they don't need to get mentioned and they uh you know stephen jones is just a writer editor in this one but um and uh, it's got also it's only got a theatrical trailer other than that as its special features uh, but go, go watch this trailer though yeah the trailer is kind of yeah. bonkers yeah it's it's just it seems really entertaining I, i've never heard of this one um all right so to recap our last week of january we had warner brothers bones and all event horizon 4k from paramount uh which is actually a pretty good extras for a paramount release we had blood for dracula aka andy warhol's dracula from 1974 uh, Legacy of Blood, a.k.a. Legacy of Horror from 78. My Pick of the Week, Dawn of the Dead 2004, 4K Collector's Edition from Shout Factory. And Brian's Pick of the Week, Keenan Lorber's 1972 release of The Asphyx. And that will do it for January. Uh-huh. My foot fell asleep during the dismemberment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This could have been much worse, though. January, yeah. Yeah, January gave us a little bit of a break uh, from some of the epic ones we've had where we've had to do two-parters. So uh, we will see you back here next month for yes. our February disc commemorment. And we'll hope to see you soon in our first season seven regular episode. Yes. See, see you care. later. Oh, wait, let me go. Let me high five my guys behind me. Oh, I can't uh, do it. Um, I should have practiced on, that. There we go. He's he's stabbing me. right. Is this yeah, a, he is right. He's now. a he's a this guy's a real pain in the neck. I mean, he really is. He's got you right there. <laughs> <laughs> later, guys. All right, see you.